if I asked you to have a guacamole party with me, would you do it? If she would say uh, yes, then the bot would smile, playfully say, okay, do women love anything more than avocados? Oftentimes when there were like dull evenings, I would like try to find dates. Whenever I had like free time, I was like on the toilet or something, you start swiping and it's a massive time sink. I thought there had to be some kind of way to automate this process. And that's the reason why I started working with this uh, Tinder bot. It was like on a GitHub. And once you open it up, it looks like Facebook Messenger almost. It's like a web interface for your Tinder. You can chat with the girls, you can see their user icon on the left. You have the conversation on the right. And you also have the terminal window running where you can see what the bot is doing. And with some customizations on the script, you could also start a conversation automatically and detect positive and negative sentiments. And from there on, the bot would like start a mini conversation. The second step is where you actually train the bot to know your preferences. In the background, there is like an elementary machine learning method running. It detects things in the picture like color, hair color, eye color facial structure for the bone, uh, cheekbones and so forth. With all these machine learning images that are being inputted into the system, the system actually gets to learn on what you like or dislike and can actually start making this decision for you without you having to interact with it. The more pictures you swipe yes or no to, the more accurate the AI or the bot can decide for you if it needs to move forward with this match or not. The overall challenge with a lot of males on Tinder or any other dating app is that, hey, they won't get responses because their profiles or pictures are not good enough. I was in that camp where, hey, like I wasn't really getting that many dates through dating apps. I felt like I was putting a lot of time into it. So I was like, okay, why don't I and try to say develop an AI that would just automate the process for me. So on a simple level, we can use machine learning to make predictions about certain things. The idea behind it is to kind of replicate the neurons in your brain to make the most intelligent predictions based off of as much data as possible. What deep learning can do is it can actually learn like the edges of faces or the different shapes inside an image. So I was able to extract a lot of the data that I've already clicked myself and use that to train the model. However, one of the problems was that I actually probably dislike most of the profiles that I see. And so then the algorithm only learns the, the profiles that I dislike. I had to like get more data of people that I liked. I ended up just like using a scraper and scraped a bunch of Google data. I trained it with images of, of females that I, that I found attractive. For the bot, I had a automated message that I can like change every time I, I got a match. And then once I got a match, then I can start a conversation there. If I want to build an artificial intelligence that learns my interest in women, I have to first collect a lot of data about women. I developed a method that um, teleports my profile to different locations in Switzerland, just fetched all data of all women in that area, and then categorized the woman systematically in two categories. I like the woman or I dislike the woman. In like 48 hours, I fetched like 40,000 images of women in my area so that you can figure out which women I like in my area and which I don't. I then used the Tinder API to get people in my actual area and used my, my pre-trained artificial intelligence to swipe Tinder in an intelligent way. If also taking into account the some of the metadata, like the university of the person, the location of the person, or the length of the profile description it provided. Hinge came along and they, they make you, you know, actually send a message based on a piece of content. It does end up that like there's five photos that everyone has. There's mm -hmm. a dog photo, there's a holding my nephew photo, there's a hiking photo. Like, it's literally like you can categorize it. Now how do you like optimize that interaction? And the idea I had in my head was called witty lot because I was watching the banter in the inbox. To imagine in a world where you don't start with letters and words to make meaning, you start with your intent and you're like, hmm, I like her. Based on whatever the photos are, that can 
auto write that entire box. I mean, don't even think of it as a bot. Think of it as your friend who's your concierge who's going to find you a date. It's a funny story. Like, my girlfriend, she was one of the matches that my bot created on Tinder. And my bot actually started a conversation with her very random on a party a few months after. And I met my current girlfriend and I was really attracted to her. But she didn't know that I was the guy from Tinder and I didn't know that my bot had a conversation with her in the past. And I told her the story that I'm not telling you. And she's like, oh yeah, I remember. And you said that, that, and that. And it was exactly the conversation from the, from the bot and the tree. The Tinder bot I built has like a 90 to 92 percent um, ratio in which it swipes correctly for me. This is not a very good performance from, from my personal usage. Could he easily have messaged women as well using my bot, but I didn't implement that feature. I was thinking, okay, I'll see how many matches I can collect. The last time I checked, the, the matches were around 1,200. I think it swipes maybe 10,000, 20,000 times. At one point, the bot was having like maybe 200 conversations at the same time. And I think uh, <laughs> at Tinder they noticed and they, uh, they banned me, of course, from the platform. The response when I told women that I built an AI that automated Tinder was that uh, they were actually very impressed by it. I think most of the women I've gone on dates with were not in, like, say, an engineering type of field. So to them, they thought it was like very, a, a very magical thing that I built. I went on a date with someone who was like a chief marketing officer at one of the dating apps. And I just was like, what do you think about this kind of idea that I'm working on? And I showed her, she's like, if you give this to the world, you're going to manipulate everyone. And guys are going to trick women and blah, blah. I was like, whoa, like I didn't give it to anybody. I, I'm just working on it. I, as someone on Tinder, did I consent to having my data sort of taken off Tinder and used in this way? I love what could possibly go wrong. That's my favorite design question as a design researcher and design educator. So this isn't just an issue of dudes being weird and trying to like date as many people as possible, which is creepy and Tinder should not allow creepiness. It's also sort of a heightened level of inappropriateness, if you will, um, because someone's sort of taking your data, creating a machine learning model around like data in aggregate. Uh, none of the women or people consented to that. How will it feel as like a woman who's never interacted with that person or a person who's on the site who ends up just in their data scraping, how will that person feel being in their data set? If any of this data could be accessed, think of like all different kinds of uh, domestic violence issues that could arise out of this. Maybe no one knew you were on Tinder and now this big data set's out there and people can access it. Maybe you get a stalker. What if people are scraping like men seeking men or women seeking women in countries where like homosexuality is illegal? What do you do? What do you do if you're a marginalized person, you're part of the LGBTQI like community? and you're in a country where this is like looked down upon, well then this poses an extreme security threat. And like that shouldn't be, um, that shouldn't be lessened in this conversation, right? Like that is a problem. Tinder just doesn't try it all. Their API is so easy accessible, I can just teleport myself all over Switzerland and fetch data and pictures of everybody on, the, on, on, on whole Switzerland that don't have to try. They just like offer the data for free basically. So it's very easy to hack it and it's very easy to data mine from it. These are real security vulnerabilities that platforms need to take seriously, and Tinder, as a dating app, needs to view itself as a platform. A creep tries to abuse the script's freely rights um, to get himself dates. Yeah, of course he can do that, and um, that's true. Um, but the other side of open sourcing our script is, script is that Tinder has the possibility to see how we spoof their API and how we hack their Tinder. The real problem is that Tinder doesn't do anything to prevent us from hacking it. I'm of the mindset that bots should always be disclosed in a setting like Bumble or Tinder or Hinge where you aren't expecting to engage with a bot, you're expecting to engage with a real person. That's a great way to push users off the site, especially if they're getting a high frequency of interactions that they're not used to, which looks and feels like spam. The notion that 
men or women are using artificial intelligence to sort of just really run numbers and even bots to communicate for them. I think that it's only one more reason that I'm not currently on any dating apps. There's ethical concerns that at any time that you're not the one who's, who's personally writing um, your responses or evaluating a potential match. I found that a little disheartening because I feel like I have done the work. If your intention is to find a match and date, there's a better way to do it. If your intention is to use software to feed my ego to feel better about myself, there's a load of software things that can do that. Match with everyone, swipe, 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 ding, 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 ding. Like, that's a very shallow, hollow kind of world that I don't know I would want to do. Yeah, partly why I stopped using it for dating was because I haven't really met, I didn't meet somebody that I really clicked with through an AI. As a woman, I would not be interested in an automated dating app that did the algorithms for me or used AI because to me that takes away the personal touch of it. I'd rather have one match in a month. It is hardly on the edge of morality to even swipe women using a bot and to actually write them automated messages. For me it was just a bit too much. And I see the issues and I totally agree with them. There's no laws yet so it's kind of like wild west. I believe there's gonna be regulation and things that have to be created around this space in the next two to three years that will dictate how everyone has to play in the space. What I've realized in the bot space is knowing if it's a machine or a human, I think is very important. The, the reason I didn't put it out there is not as much about the assistant writing in a bot that can help you, it's more about disclosure and the ethics around that. It's giving the power of better words to men who otherwise maybe wouldn't say that or aren't that good of a person. For the good that I think it can do, if not disclosed or packaged correctly or used with the wrong intention, words have power. And I think it can be a dangerous thing. And this is kind of the problem with like Silicon Valley's like sort of hacker or fix it mindset is they get hyper focused on one problem. And the problem this was like optimizing dating. But what they didn't take a step back and look at was like what could possibly go wrong if other people with different agendas can use this.